No Rest for the Wicked is a third-person action RPG developed by Moon Studios, who are most known for having made the Ori series of games. This game, however, promises to be a unique experience in the form of an action RPG with Souls-like mechanics and combat, which instantly piqued my interest for it back when it was announced. Yesterday, No Rest for the Wicked was released on Early Access, and so I've been playing around with this game for a while, and, well, I do have some thoughts. Before I jump into the positive and then negative stuff about this game, shout out to Moon Studios for sending me a free copy of the game. That said, Moon Studios has asked me and probably every other content creator out there to be as honest as possible with their first impressions, so let's begin. For starters, I play on a pretty beefy rig, and I'm equipped with an RTX 4090 and a 7950X3D CPU. And well, the game is relatively smooth, but I wasn't able to hold a steady 100 FPS even on my rig on a 1080p resolution. And I'm not sure if this is because of a need for optimization or if the game is actually that graphically demanding, but if I were to hazard a guess, I'd say it's probably the former. The frames noticeably tanked in the main city, which you reach at a later point in the early access, but then again, the city is a completely open area, so this doesn't really surprise me. So in typical RPG fashion, you begin the game by creating your character, and well, right from the get-go, I can say that the character creator is definitely limited in comparison with most other RPGs in our day and age. There aren't a lot of options to choose from, and the ones that are there aren't exactly great. It doesn't help that your character has some rather strange proportions, but that's more of an opinion about the art style than anything. Then again, most top-down RPGs have this type of limited character creation system, such as the Diablo series or even Divinity 1 and 2 by Larian, so it's a rather minor complaint from my side, and this type of limited character creation system is something most people aren't going to complain about. At least I don't think so. Now, as I mentioned, No Rest for the Wicked has a very unique art style and it really sets itself apart from its contemporaries with its blending of 3D with its almost paintbrush-like art style. It takes some time getting used to, for sure, but it does look really wonderful at times, and I think Moon Studios has managed to capture the essence of this world that they're trying to craft pretty well. So, that brings us to the world and the story of No Rest for the Wicked. What are we in for here? Well, you take up the role as the Serum, which is a type of legendary figure, and it's essentially your job to, well, in rough terms, save the Isle of Sakra, which is where the early Axis takes place, from some form of curse or sickness known as the Great Pestilence that corrupts and twists people into monsters. You start off the game on board a boat bound for the island, and it's not long before all hell breaks loose and you have to fight for survival, only to end up shipwrecked off the coast of the island. It's too late for fairy tales! Now right from the get-go, No Rest for the Wicked does not hold back on enemy difficulty and the game very much wears the Soulsborne inspiration on its sleeves. Enemies are merciless and will charge at you as soon as they see you, and just like the Souls series, even the simplest enemies have tricks up their sleeves, like being able to parry your attacks or charge at you without much warning. The game also has some pretty neat exploration mechanics, and aside from some genuinely thoughtful platforming, you get to equip various tools like pickaxes, shovels, and axes that allows you to collect resources from around the island. Now going back to the combat, I do think that No Rest for the Wicked features some pretty cool combat mechanics, and it feels like Moon Studios has put extra effort into making sure that both dodging through attacks or parrying feels equally good in this game. That said, I do think the combat needs some additional work because it does have some issues. One of my main complaints is that enemies can still damage you when you're knocked down, meaning you don't have any iframes when you're on the ground. Now this wouldn't have been much of an issue if enemies were treated the same, but alas, you cannot hit enemies when they're knocked down, which is a pretty frustrating design choice and I'd much prefer if the game treated both you and enemies equally. The game also has another frustrating element that I really think needs some fine tuning, and this is the stamina management. Because enemies are so incredibly aggressive and you can still get killed when knocked over, Making sure you don't run out of stamina constantly in fights is actually very difficult, and while it does provide some additional challenge to the game, it actually became more of an annoyance factor for me even the first hour of playing. 
Now this can be a quick fix for the devs as you can simply tone down enemy aggressiveness or difficulty in the early hours of the game to offset the stamina gains you get from leveling later on. So you don't necessarily have to revamp the entire mechanic in of itself. Another thing I think needs fine tuning is how quickly your gear degrades when you die. You see, instead of dropping all of your collected souls or runes like in the Souls games, your equipment will lose durability whenever you die. And as far as I can tell, most gear breaks pretty quickly and durability seems to go down by about 10 to 15% every time you die, which is a pretty huge chunk of your durability considering how much you'll be dying in this game. A solution to this I found was to simply not use any of the armor I found as I was playing, and for 90% of my playtime so far I've been running around almost but naked, smacking monsters with my greatsword. Speaking of swords, I do think that all the other early game weapons need some fine tuning as well as they all feel really terrible in comparison to the claymore or greatsword. Yikes. Hell, because the game uses the same type of carry weight mechanic as the Soulsborne games, where you get heavier the more items you equip, I simply elected to kill the very first boss with my bare hands because it's just that much more effective considering how slow you are with even the thinnest of armor equipped. Another sort of frustration I have with this game is the camera. You see, No Rest for the Wicked has a fixed camera angle, meaning you cannot turn the camera around, which is completely fine. The problem is that some of the camera placements are pretty bad, like at this particular moment where I was exploring an optional part of the map, where you have to jump between ghostly platforms to make it to your final destination. Unfortunately, because of how some 3D models are placed and because of the odd camera placement sometimes, it's frustratingly hard to gauge what angle you're supposed to jump at at times. Because if you fail, you'll fall to your death only to have to make it all the way back to where you were all over again. Again, I love me some platforming and I do think most of it is pretty good in this game, but stuff like this definitely has to be looked over. Now I can't say much about the various RPG elements since the game is still in early access, but the leveling system does seem to be pretty simplistic, at least for now. You simply upgrade various attributes with your skill points as you level, and hopefully the game opens up more later on with some deeper RPG mechanics. All in all, No Rest for the Wicked has been a pretty enjoyable ride so far, and I'm interested in seeing where the game goes next. But as it is an early access, I'd go in with the mindset that this game just isn't finished at all if you do decide to pick this up. As aside from some of my own frustrations with the game, there are most likely other annoyances that you're bound to encounter as you try it out. But do let me know what you think about No Rest for the Wicked so far, as I'm interested in hearing what you guys think of it. And don't forget to subscribe for more, Mr. Holton, signing out.